To explain the emission lines of hydrogen, that was a big problem for scientists in the 20th century, Niels Bohr postulated that the light emitted by the excited hydrogen gas was as a result of electrons jumping from higher energy levels to lower ones, giving off their energy as EM waves. He postulated that the momentum of the electrons in the atom was in integer multiples of the Planck's constant over 2 pi. As a result, it meant that following from Rutherford's planetary model of the atom, electrons can exist only in orbits of that atom whose radii are in the square of a fundamental radius R0. The Zeeman effect showed that there are more orbits than predicted by the Bohr equation, proving that the Bohr equation was consequential. This problem and all the other problems in quantum mechanics as we shall see in later videos go away when we write the momentum of the electron as I proved in the first video, which is this. Writing the momentum this way shows that the orbital radii of electrons are in simple integer multiples of R0. We can see that for n being a positive integer like so, n squared is an element of n and therefore the Bohr equation is a subset of my equation. This shows that even though the Bohr formula is correct, it can only work for particular cases, particularly the hydrogen atom. Notice the absence of the atomic number in the Bohr equation. This makes it difficult to apply it to atoms other than hydrogen. The Zeeman effect is a phenomenon where an energy level defined by a given principal quantum number splits into a number of equally spaced shells or orbits above and below the main shell as shown. These shells are defined by the magnetic quantum numbers like so. If the main shell had principal quantum number 16, for example, then the first extra shell above will be 16 plus 1, which is equal to 17. The next is 16 plus 2, which is equal to 18. The next is 19, and so on. Below we have 16 minus 1, which is equal to 15, 16 minus 2, which is equal to 14, and then 13. In the last video, we showed that these exact orbits are what we get directly by simply using my momentum equation, showing that all the known quantum numbers are redundant and are dispensable. Let's do a quick review on the derivation of the energy quantization formula according to the Bohr model. The momentum equation is given as follows. We know from classical physics that angular momentum can also be written as this. Equating the two equations gives the following equation. Simplifying for velocity produces this. For an electron going round a nucleus, there is a centripetal force given according to Newton's second law as follows. The centripetal acceleration, A subscript C, is given as follows. Therefore, we can write the centripetal force as this. This centripetal force is the electrostatic force of attraction between the electron and the positively charged nucleus and is given by the following equation. Equating the two equations, like so, produces the following equation and rearranging for V squared gives this. Squaring V produces the following blue equation, and equating the V squares produces the following equation. Now the equation contains only one variable, which is R, and rearranging produces R equal to this. Apart from N, which is a positive integer that can take different values, every other thing is a constant, and so we can write R equal to n squared times r0, where r0 
is equal to this. We know that the charge of the nucleus is the atomic number times the charge of one electron. So putting these in their equation produces the following red expression. Solving this red equation in the expression for velocity produces the following yellow equation for V as a function of the quantum number n. Classically, the total mechanical energy of a particle is given by the following equation in terms of V and R. Subbing in the above equations for V and R produces the following result. The two terms in the equation are identical, with one being half of the other. So, simplifying just gives negative half of it. This is the energy quantization equation according to the Bohr model. Looking at this equation, we see that the only two variables are the atomic number z and the quantum number n. The rest are constants. So we can express the energy as minus z squared on n squared times a constant e naught. e naught is equal to this. If you sub in the numerical values of the four constants, which includes the mass of the electron, the electrostatic constants, the electronic charge and the Planck's constant, we have 13.6 electron volts. So the energy equation becomes minus 13.6 electron volts times z squared on n squared. If z is equal to 1 and n is also equal to 1, this corresponds to the first energy level of the hydrogen atom, giving an energy of minus 13.6 electron volt without orbit. This is the energy of the ground state of the atom. Let us now repeat this process using my model and see the modifications it makes on the energy quantization equation. Following from the Bohr momentum equation and the classical expression for momentum, we had the following equation, which produced the following expression for V. Using my form of the momentum equation, this velocity equation is modified to this, which is obtained simply by replacing n with square root of z n. The equation of v squared gotten by analyzing the centripetal force remains the same, like so. So squaring v and equating the two equations for v squared gives the following yellow expression. Rearranging for r, produces the following green equation. As before, we let capital Q be equal to Z times E and sub it in this equation to have the following equation. Subbing this into the velocity equation yields the following equation for velocity in terms of Z and N. Subbing these expressions in the total energy formula produces the following equation. It essentially has the same form as before, so simplifying just gives half of the potential energy. So we can express this energy as minus z on n times e naught, e naught being the same as before, and having the value 13.6 electron volt. So we can write e equal to minus 13.6 electron volt times z over n. This equation looks identical to this one that we derived earlier using the Bohr model, with the difference being that the z over n term is squared in the Bohr model result. This again shows how consequential the Bohr model is. Every value of n that can be calculated using the Bohr energy equation can also be gotten using my energy equation, and my equation can calculate for even more orbits. For example, if let's say z on n is a positive integer, the Bohr energy equation can only produce energies such as 1, 4, 9, 16 times e naught. 
while my energy equation can produce energy such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, times E0. Let us now apply this to the solar system. The momentum equation is the same, which produces this same expression for velocity. The major difference comes in because the centripetal force is now provided by mass and is given according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, like so. Equating this with the equation for centripetal force, according to circular motion we saw earlier, yields the following equation. Simplifying yields V squared equal to GM on R. Squaring V, the purple equation, and equating it to this V squared, as we saw before, and simplifying yields the following expression for the orbital radius. Recall that the mass of the star, capital M, is given as alpha times M0. Putting this in the green equation produces the following red expression. Everything is a constant except for n, which is the orbital quantum number. So we can write r equal to n r naught, where r naught is given by this expression. Subbing that into the velocity equation yields the following brown equation. Going a little faster, the energy equation becomes this. You can pause to verify. Simplifying yields this. So we can write the energy equation as minus alpha over n times E0, E0 being equal to this. This shows that energy is quantized in solar systems in exactly the same way it is quantized in atoms. Coupled with the evidence from previous videos, I think you should be more convinced at this point that a solar system is just a big atom. We shall test this formula in the next video using data of our solar system. At this point, you should be able to bring yourself to accepting the Rutherford planetary model of the atom and clear from your head the idea of atoms containing some magical elements called electrons that jump around uncontrollably. If you think the evidence presented up to this point does not suffice to make that conclusion, press the subscribe button to be presented with more proofs. I shall derive the De Broglie equation, the Planck's equation, the Schrodinger equation, and so on, as clearly and simply as I have done this once. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.